Hello and uh, welcome to a series of drawing tutorials by myself, Peter Scott. Um, I'm going to be calling this, uh, well, I think this title works best for me. That's ha 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 ha, keys a picture. Um, over the next few weeks what I'm going to do is use this platform called YouTube, which you may have heard of. Uh, as a means to share some drawing practice with you. So I'm going to show you some basic drawings and drawing techniques. Um, some of which my pupils who have taught in school will probably recognise already. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, the way to learn how to draw and to improve your drawing skills is to continue to practice and focus on the same skills, skills rather, over and over again until you feel that you're mastering drawing certain objects. I've decided to keep some of the uh, current situation relevant to what we're doing within the drawings. Uh, I went to the supermarket earlier this evening and to my amazement and surprise I managed to get some of this stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this bottle um, for this first tutorial. Okay so um, I'm going to switch camera angles now so there should be a wee kind of Coming up now, very exciting. Okay, see you shortly. Just wanted to point out to start off with uh, the materials that I have here. Um, we're also sourced from a supermarket this evening. Um, this, as you can see, is lined paper, and this is a cheap pencil. But lined paper and cheap pencils are still things to draw with. So, as far as I'm concerned, regardless of what you have to draw with, you can still draw with it. It doesn't matter if it's lined paper, plain paper, toilet paper is probably not something you want to draw on at this point in time, but also it's not that great for drawing with. Um, cheap materials are as good as expensive materials. Um, the most important thing is that you're drawing and trying to draw and giving yourself a chance to draw. So, as you can see here, what we've got is a plain bit of paper and a pencil. And we have the bottle sitting in front of us, just to remind you of what the bottle looks like. Here it is again, okay. Um, what you can see when you look at the bottle is how light hits it. When I put it back to where I'm going to draw it, obviously the light is going to hit it differently because of the angle that it's sitting at, how the light hits it at a different angle. Where it in sits will change, the light will change as soon as you place something in a different space. So when you're looking at your bottle and I'm looking at my bottle, we're going to be drawing different things, obviously, because it's in different places, but at the same time, you've got to think about where the light hits the object. You can see you've got that big shiny bit of light sitting there, so if I was to draw this at that angle, I'd have to consider that as well. But we'll come back to tone at a later point, so I'm going to start off with the basic devices, right? Um, so, what I'll often say to classes is, think about the alphabet, think about basic shapes and how you understand and know basic shapes. So put this back over here, you recognise this shape here, that shape there, that shape there, A, B, C, D, E, F, and so on. These are basic shapes, and we all know how to draw them. And I say draw, not write, because basically writing is drawing. Um, it's getting your head around that concept and understanding that drawing is an understanding of shape and taking shapes, positive shapes, negative shapes and putting them together and making them into a drawing. Sounds complicated, it's not. It's just straightforward if you make it straightforward, okay? So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to consider the space that I've got to work into. So I'm thinking about the bottle in itself and the main body of the bottle is largely effectively almost like a square. It's a rectangle but it's almost like a square so if we take that down we fill that negative space as a positive. So basically if I put my pencil next to that like that, that makes it have a straight edge. Okay. And then we've got a straight edge up here. Think about how the collar goes up to there as well. And then down here we've got a straight edge there and at the base a straight edge. And then we've got this wee bit at the top as well we have to consider. So I'm going to put it back up so I can start to draw the basic shape, okay? So, start off with 
a rectangular square shape. Okay. Like that. And you can see I'm not being precious. I'm sketching over my lines because that's what I need to do to make the drawing work. So sketch, keep your pencils loose. Okay. The next thing I'm thinking about is the lid. Okay, and it's like a wee square as well. It's like a wee rectangle square. You can see my mathematical terminology is wonderful. A rectangle square. Great expression. So there's a wee rectangle square there. I'm going to draw a shape called a trapezium, okay, which is like a triangle with the top choked off. And what that's going to help me do is form what's called the ellipse at the bottom, which is the space that goes in between the front and the back. Yeah, okay. There's another wee trapezium sitting on top because there's another part of the bottle that sits there, which is the part with the squeezy device, and it'll have another wee trapezium sitting there as well. And then we've got the actual squeezy device thing as well. Now I'm fighting against my urge to draw it. As I see it, what I'm going to do here is again draw almost a triangle shape coming across. Right. So there's me got the basic start of a drawing. The next thing I'm going to start doing is thinking about adding the curves in. Okay. So this part here, which is the squeezy dispenser part, it curves around like that. It curves around here like that. Now remember it's see-through, so I can still see the workings of the bottle at the top there as well. Just to remind you what that looks like. Look at that. Look at that. It's see-through. Amazeball. So put that back over here. So, looking at this part here, comes down. Now you can see what's happening as I'm sketching the curves in. Okay, so... I'm now looking at other lines that are on. There's a line coming across here like that. comes down and back across. Okay. Then I'm looking inside it. So because I know it's see-through, I can see another line coming down here and up there. And a circular curve in there as well. And that comes down to one of my trapezium shapes, which sits here. So then you can see how I'm just adding curves in as I go. And I'm not worried about drawing over my drawing because basically part of drawing and learning how to draw is drawing over drawing, over drawing, over drawing, okay? And I want you to think about it like that so that basically in order for you to improve anything that you're going to do, don't use a rubber at this stage, okay? Draw over your drawings. So you can see how that's forming now. I'm going to make the lines a wee bit stronger. I'm going to bring the curve around here and around here which gives the lid of the bottle its shape now. Then I'm thinking about the shoulders that I was talking about earlier on and how they come down to here and round round and then round there like that. So it's again adding the curves in and then adding the shoulder on that side adding the curve in over here that's starting to form the shape of the bottle now and then down the side here, it curves in and it curves out. And then we have a curve coming across here. And a curve going across there and then this comes in. And that goes out as well. Down here you can see how loose and sketchy my line is. Okay, just keeping it loose. Not worrying about how it looks as a finished drawing, but it's a sketch. Okay. Sketchy loose lines, keeping it simple. Okay, and I'm working over my lines. Now I'm thinking about the curve coming in at the bottom of the bottle, and a curve coming in here as well on the other side. And it curves around the outside here as well. Curve down here. And I'm thinking about my label coming in over here. It's a cool wee label actually. It's got like pictures of monkeys and giraffes and stuff on it. I'm a big fan of monkeys. I once saw a pair of monkey trousers in a shop once. And um 
and inquired what they were and I was told they were monkey trousers. I didn't actually think that was a thing but it turns out that it was a costume that was very popular in a part of Italy called Florence for a festival that they have there each year and that there's a particular type of trousers that people wear called monkey trousers. Um, yeah, so I'm kind of sketching in where the label sits now as well. And again, if you think about how that works, it's like again, it's a shape that comes round. I'm using basic shapes to draw in and then working in more basic shapes in there. The actual design of it is again much more curved. But again, if you use straight lines for curves as well, it makes them easier to draw in. So sometimes when I'm sitting drawing, I will go quiet, which is obviously quite a difficult thing to do when you're doing a drawing tutorial. But there's a point in that quietness and that basically point is called concentration and that's the, one of the key aspects about drawing that you have to learn is being able to stay focused and move your focus to what you're doing and what you can't see at the moment and I'll probably do a wee drawing exercise where what you do is you watch my eyes and how many times they go back and forth towards what I'm drawing it's um very much a case that I often think it's possibly like watching somebody watching a game of tennis because their eyes go back and forwards, back and forwards, back and forwards between what they're drawing. Um, somebody once taught me that drawing was 90% observation and 10% mark making. Mark making being the drawing or the sketch that you're making. So you can see. I've kind of sketched out the basics of a bottle there. Um, the next part that I would be wanting to consider would be tone, okay? Because then that allows me to take these parts of the bottle that I have uh, drawn so far and turn them into tonal parts of the drawing, okay? Which is kind of what I'm hinting at at this point in time just now. So. What we need to do is have a look at the bottle again and we'll have a look at it from where it's sitting at this point. Okay, so I'm going to stop the camera at this point and we'll have another wee moment where we change angles. How exciting. Look, there's my hand. It's amazing. Okay, so here's my viewpoint of the bottle. Okay, so as I'm looking at it, basically there are shadows and light hitting it that I'm going to have to draw. And I'm going to have to consider it how that works with what creates the shadows around it. So at the moment my camera is sitting right in front of the bottle but if I move it out of the way it will sort of change what kind of light is in the bottle as well. You can see how I'm moving it from different angles it changes how the lights and the shadows appear in the bottle. Okay so what I have to do when I'm sitting drawing this is I have to settle on the angle that I'm drawing it from. Um, what I mean by that is I have to consider how I position my head when I look at it. I have to think about the angle that I look at it. If I close one eye, it changes the perspective of it. So if you have a look at the object that you're going to draw and think about if you close one eye, what happens to that particular object? What happens to the light on it? How does it shift? How does it change? So you've got two eyes, you use two eyes and draw those two eyes. Um, you can half close your eyes to help you see shadows a little bit better, but have a look and think about where the shadows are as they hit the object that you're drawing, okay? And then we'll have a wee look at how we start to apply tone, okay? Because again, the object that you're looking at is three-dimensional. What you're doing on paper is two-dimensional, okay? So when you're doing something that's two-dimensional, you don't have to worry about it being see-through because it's on a bit of paper, okay? So what you're effectively doing is recording shadows and light as you see them. So you're going from 3D to 2D. Okay, so try and remember that. Okay, so I'm going to look at the shoulders of the bottle and I'm going to think about how I draw in the dark and light. So as I'm drawing it, what I'm doing is I'm constantly looking at the object 
I'm constantly considering where the dark tones, where the red tones, where the light tones are. So as I draw these parts in, what I'm thinking in my head is dark tone, dark tone, dark tone. And it gets to this part here, mid tone, mid tone. Over here, light, mid, lighter. And then also what I'm doing is I'm moving my pencil in a particular direction to try and capture the shape of the object as well. So I'm not just thinking about the tone, but I'm thinking about how the tone creates the shape of the object as well. So as I add each part of tone in, I'm thinking constantly about where I'm drawing, what I'm drawing. So I'm thinking about the shape of the lid. I'm thinking about some of the pattern that's in the lid as well. There's these little ringlets that are underneath. And I've got the lines coming up. And there are lots of kind of mid tones around there. When it comes to the front, there's more lighter tones. You can see how I'm moving my pencil, how it's mark making. There's a kind of darker tone that come across as well. So, as I draw, I'm constantly observing what I'm looking at. I'm constantly thinking about how I can make those tones work, and it's all information that I gather just by looking. Okay, key part to drawing is looking. I know that sounds really obvious, but the amount of times I watch people when they draw and they don't look at what they're drawing, they just look at the paper. And I just think, like, if you're copying something off a board, again, that's an exercise that I get people to do, is watch how many times somebody looks up and copies off a board. And if you watch what they do, people look up to look at words, to think about what they're copying down. So when you're doing a bit of drawing, and you're looking at an object, and you're not thinking about what you're looking at, then how can you possibly, if you're not looking at it, consider that your drawing's ever going to be accurate? So you have to constantly look. Okay, always look. Okay, so I'm considering the tone around the neck of the dispenser part. And I'm thinking about the shape of that, I'm drawing that back in. You can see how I'm moving my pencil, it's curved because it's curved. And I'm moving it in the way like that because it goes in towards the centre of the circle and then it comes out around that side as well. So we're constantly thinking about the shape. Now thinking about the lid and the push part of the dispenser and I'm looking there's quite a strong shadow in the top there. And I'm bringing that across here. Got that wee circle bit there. And that's got some light. So I'm going to put a wee bit in there, there as well. And then just create a little bit of dark tone coming in. some of that light tone in here as well. Very soon I'm going to take a rubber into it. Okay, now again, one of the things that I want you to realize about what rubber does, a rubber is a drawing device. It's not for making mistakes go away. Okay, it's a drawing device so you use it to draw with. This is the noise of my freshly bought pencil box being ripped open to get a rubber out, very exciting. I wouldn't tell you the name of the supermarket that I bought them from. But there's a really big one in Falkirk. So as you can see, what I've started doing is applying the shadow to the neck of the bottle and to the top of the bottle to the dispenser. What I'm going to do with the rubber basically 
we start to lift some of the lighter parts out again and work some of the shadows back in. Drawing should always be something that continuously develops through working parts in, taking parts out, working parts in, taking parts out. Um, it's just a case of you learning how to master what you're doing each time you do it. Okay, so I'm going to take the rubber in and I'm going to just lift out some of the parts over here. And what I'm doing with it is drawing with it as well. Okay, so I like this kind of corner edge that it's got on it. So I'm drawing in just some of the the lighter parts that I can see. Again what I'll probably do is go back in with a pencil at some point and just lift some of the dark tones back in again. Okay, so again I'm going to lift some of the dark tones back in here. Put a mid tone going across the middle there as well. Move the bubble back in. And I've got a dark tone set under here, so I'm going to basically work that in. And work around the side like that. You can see where it comes through this part up here. There's some light in that as well, so I'm going to take the rubber back in to get some of the light back out of that. And what the rubber does as well, it kind of blends some of the aspects of the drawing quite nicely. So I'm going to make that all lighter again still. A kind of cusper edge here again. And you can see I'm just kind of working parts of it and working it back in until I'm kind of happy with how it looks. So I'm now going to work in some more of this part, which is the uh, Top of the lid again, it's got a lot of light hit. I'm going to bring these straight lines down again again. So basically with the straight lines, there's loads of them. Tons of them on that bottle. So I'm not going to draw them all accurately. I'm just going to stylize that part, okay? Because it makes it bearable to draw in a short space of time because if I start down here and try to draw each line one at a time I think I would probably go mad um, or just yeah I would struggle I think most people would and probably struggle to watch it as well which I wouldn't blame you for okay so now what I'm doing is I'm bringing some of the shadow into the shoulders and what I'm thinking about when I draw it is I'm thinking about drawing a map of dark tones and a map I like tones and again remember what I'm doing is I'm drawing onto a 2D surface but it's onto white paper so although it's see through what I'm actually doing is I'm drawing something that is just a series of tones so it's dark tones and mid tones and when I draw those in all I'm doing is thinking about the shape of the bottle that I'm drawing and trying to make sure that the shape of what I draw ties in with that. So at the moment what I'm doing is really just focusing and not on the dark tones that I can see in the bottom. And I'm using the lines and the shapes that I drew earlier on to help guide me to draw them where I see them.
and then just take another go back in just to last a couple of turns out. And then we'll come back in again. And again, thinking about the direction of what I'm drawing and the shape of what I'm drawing as well. while I shift on my seat. Again, what I'm doing is I'm kind of moving towards a slightly lighter tone here. There's still more dark tones in there. But what I'm thinking about is just trying to bring a few of the lighter tones in. Just to give it more variation. So I'm thinking about the shape of what I'm drawing as well, as I said earlier on. So just continuously thinking about the shape of what you draw and how when you draw it, how you can make sure that you're getting that kind of three-dimensional quality to what you're drawing as well. So I'm going to take the rubber back in now and just pick out some light in here. And behind here again, just lighten that up a little bit. Or maybe work some more dark back into that to pull it back. But I just have to recognise some where my light tones are hitting and some of my dark tones are. So, one of the things that's crucial about drawing is to understand that it's a process of building something up and working on it and making your own interpretation of it as well. I know for a fact that there's people who will approach their way of drawing differently than how I'm approaching this just now. Um, but effectively, this is a process that I find is quite easy as a means to start the drawing. We'd start off with basic shapes, start building up tone gradually, knowing what you understand, looking and finding dark tones and drawing the dark tones. A lot of people when they draw that I teach when they're maybe in first and second year struggle to draw in as heavily dark as I've gone in because they can't see how dark it is. But it is dark because it's got dark shadows in it. So there are dark shadows and there are light shadows so Treat your paper as the lightest part by all means, but then also think about how dark you have to go to create that kind of contrast and shadow that gives some of the dimensional quality. And that's kind of what you're looking for in your drawing. Just kind of tricking people to see something that looks three-dimensional. Finding that shadow and light in what you're drawing as well. Now this is just a quick sketch. But you can see from how many times I go back in with the rubber and how many times I pick certain things out, how much thinking is involved in trying to create that right tone, that right shape, that right contrast. When I look at this drawing, I know for a fact that there's quite a few mistakes that I've made in it as well. But the mistakes that I'm making in the drawing I'm not too bothered about because basically it's a process of me looking at the angle that I'm looking at and trying my best to recreate that. 
and it's getting there slowly and building into it and working into it. But what's really important to me at this point in time is that I'm actually quite enjoying doing the drawing. And again, something that I think is hugely important that maybe we don't discuss enough at times when we teach. Maybe some people do. But certainly what I forget to mention is how much actually drawing should be something that's considered to be an enjoyable process. Looking at something, learning how to recreate it on paper through your own interpretation. I think that's something that you would want to try and enjoy rather than it being something that's a hindrance. And if you find that a hindrance, then, you know, ask yourself why. Because if you're looking for perfection, then you'll never find it in a drawing. But if you're looking to make an interpretation of something the way that you want to see it, or are trying to see it, or trying to draw it, then that becomes much more interesting. So that's the start of my bottle drawing. Not too bad so far, I don't think. There's quite a lot of work still needs to go into that.